Hello, good morning everybody. Can you hear me? Okay, so let's get started with this presentation about uh, the status of uh, GeoServer WPS. A bit of introductions. Myself, Andrea Aime. Uh, I'm a long-time developer of um, both GeoTools and GeoServer projects and member of the project steering committee of both. Uh, as you can see from my interest, uh, I'm a bit of a jack of all trades. I work in map rendering, spatial analysis, data access, reprojection, raster, vector security, you name it, it's there. <laughs> um, the company, I work for GeoSolutions, which is based in Italy. Um, GeoSolutions has been a long time contributor of uh, both GeoTools and GeoServer as well. We um, employ uh, a number of people involved uh, in both projects. We also employ some people involved in GeoNetwork and we develop a map store, which is our uh, open source front end library to build uh, interactive uh, maps. Uh, we have a strong focus on uh, image processing historically, but we expanded on, uh, let's say, mm, basically all the other topics that uh, uh, GeoTools and GeoServer cover with their uh, functionality. So, WPS. Uh, this presentation is a status. It's going to be half and half. The first half is going to be about uh, what WPS is and what WPS GeoServer can do uh, in general terms. And then the other half is about uh, what's new uh, in terms of WPS functionality in GeoServer 2.7, which is about to be released like a couple of weeks. So very quickly, WPS is uh, what OGC created to allow spatial analysis over the web. Uh, in very short terms, it's actually a, a, a remote procedure call mechanism for geospatial if you, if you want to. You can basically call, you can basically create whatever uh, process you want and you can expose and describe it. And it doesn't have to be spatial actually, it could be order me a pizza and it would still be a valid WPS. But of course, most of the WPS processes you can find around are in nature spatial. The protocol, very, very quickly, as all OGC protocols, it starts with a get capabilities, then a describe to describe what uh, is the content of a particular item in the capabilities, and then we have the execute operation which actually runs the process. Uh, GeoServer adds three extra operations which are not part of the standard, which are, let's say, vendor extensions if you want. I'll talk about them briefly uh, later. So get capabilities returns you a large XML document. If you compare with WMS and WFS, WPS does not contain data per se, but it contains processes. So a list of uh, actions that you can run on, on spatial data to extract some information, to uh, find uh, something, and so on, to perform some calculation. So in this list, let's say we are interested in the JTS buffer process. We know it has a title and an abstract to, that a human can read. Let's say we want to know more about the process. We could run a describe process call on this JTS buffer, and uh, the output would be another XML telling us, oh, OK, and this process takes one input, which is called geom, which is a geometry, and takes another input, which is the distance in meters or in the unit of measure of the geometry, and it generates a result, which is the buffer geometry. So uh, generally speaking, the inputs and the outputs of the process with their description, again, to generate some user interface for it. Finally, we go to, to the execute call, which is uh, what we the, the request we issue when we want to actually execute a process. So we went through the discovery of the process. We went through the description of the process. At this point, we know how to call it, what it needs. So we are going to provide a geometry, a distance, and we uh, say that we want the output as GML31. And um, the process will take this L-shaped geometry, will apply a buffer of two, and return me a, a polygon. This is a very simple example. WPS processes can, as I said, do pretty much whatever you want. <coughs> now, execute is uh, rich, uh, I'd say, in terms of what the client can ask uh, the server to do. Uh, for certain processes, you want synchronous execution. You throw the data at the server in your request. It's small. The request is fast. You get back the result immediately. So one HTTP call, and you get back directly the result, just like uh, calling 
on a HTTP website, a regular website. Uh, synchronous works very well for uh, small executions with a small amount of data involved. Uh, as you go up, uh, as uh, the processing becomes more complicated, as the data to process becomes larger, uh, synchronous execution doesn't work well anymore because you have this HTTP connection that you're waiting for and, well, you cannot stand on a HTTP connection for one hour long. It's going to time out. So, there's also the asynchronous execution mode in which uh, you say to the WPS, okay, I'm submitting this request. It's going to take a while. Just give me a URL where that I can ping, that I can um, poke every now and then to know how you, you are doing with my process. What's the progress or if the output is available? And once the output is available, the WPS will return uh, the full output or links to the output. Which brings me to the next slide. Uh, the client has also the liberty to choose three different models for getting the results. It can say, oh, OK, I'm submitting this request, and I'm, I just want the, the GML in output as raw GML, or a shapefile as a raw shapefile. Uh, OK, I submit the synchronous request, and I get back directly the data. No extra information involved. Uh, that's very nice and fine uh, for simple cases. The al alternative is that I submit a request, but I want to get back an XML that will describe the request that I made and also contain the result. So I have some reference to what kind of inputs I used when I submitted the request. Um, in the simplest case, the XML contains directly the output, which is fine if the output is small and text-based. Not so nice if the output is binary, because we have to base 64 encode it, so the, the result is going to be a bit chunky and ugly to look at. As an alternative, the client can also say, oh, OK, I, I will ask for the XML version, but please don't embed the result in the XML return. Give me links that I can use. And these links are pretty powerful, because first, uh, the XML output is the only choice you have when uh, you are doing asynchronous. And you are doing asynchronous when you have large, large data, which might result in a large output. Um, so you don't want this large output embedded in, X in XML, of course. So you have the links, you follow the links, you grab the data. The other nice thing about the links is that uh, if something goes bad with the, with the download, you can just retry to download the data. Or the server might also support HTTP resume on this download of the data. So it's much better suited to large outputs. GeoServer supports all of these uh, modality of, uh, of work because they are mandated by the standard. Uh, and uh, it makes the client life easy and the server-side developer one a bit more complicated with all these options. So now that you know more or less what a WPS is and does, what makes GeoServer WPS special? So a uh, WPS, uh, in general terms, could be isolated. It could uh, have to fetch the data from other OGC services, from remote OGC services. Or maybe could uh, expose a small set of local data that you can work on, and the WPS client uh, would have to go back and forth between uh, uh, its, its own local data and providing either links or uploading data to the WPS and get back the results. It's a fine model, but uh, it's not really handy when you are uh, playing with the large amounts of data again, because uh, there's much to upload and download. In GeoServer, we have a, a deep integration of the WPS inside uh, the set of other services that GeoServer provides, which is uh, quite handy. First, uh, it means that the WPS in is integrated with the GeoServer user interface, which means you can start playing with WPS without actually having to write uh, XML request, which is kind of nice. Uh, it means uh, that uh, you have direct, in direct integration with the local catalog of layers, which means you can say a pro to a process, could you use, please, top states as my you know, local demo layer to perform the calculation? or any, any other available layer. So it's also kind of nice because when you're building a client, 
you already have the WMS showing up this, this information, this data, and you can just call a WPS, a WPS process on top of them. Uh, the other nice thing is that I can also flip this, uh, this concept and say, OK, the output of the WPS is probably going to be a wee bit too large for a JavaScript and HTML client to, to deal with and, and download. I'm just going to republish it as a new WMS layer so that uh, this, the client can only uh, get pretty images of the result and maybe decide to throw it away because it was not uh, the result he wanted without having to download the 20 gigabytes uh, worth of the results. No? Um, finally, we have a deep integration between WMS and WPS so that you can actually transform the data as you are rendering it. And I'm going to, to show you a, a couple of examples. So uh, this is the demo request builder, which is, uh, as I said, the user interface in integration between uh, the WPS and the GeoServer user interface that lets you choose the process, specify the input, run it, run it get the output. Um, it's a very nice way to start playing with the processes and learn about them without, as I said, having to program uh, a client. Um, this is one example uh, stressing the concept of integration with the layers. So this, this is kind of a clip and ship scenario. I have some cutting geometries. I have some rivers. I wanted to cut the rivers over the geometries. I'm going to use uh, uh, a few built-in processes to collect the, the geometries for the cuts as a mask, then clip the, the streams, uh, and finally use the import process to import back the result, the, cut it, uh, the small amount of cut streams, as a new layer so that my client can just make the WMS request to view the result. Uh, so integration in input and integration in output. And plus, this uh, slide also shows chaining. That is the ability of taking n small, simple processes and put them in a sequence to perform a more complex action. Rendering transformations is uh, the integration between WPS and WMS. The idea that I can take my data and just before rendering it, transform it into something else on the fly, taking into account the current um, drawing resolution. This allows GeoServer uh, to do on the fly heat maps, interpolation, uh, extraction of contour lines, and many, many other things at very good performance because all these operations are not made at the native resolution of the data. They are always made at the resolution I'm looking at through the WMS, so um, at a much coarser resolution. Or, alternatively, at the same resolution but in a very small area. So it allows for interactive extraction. Uh, other uh, servers provide these capabilities. The nice thing about what GeoServer does is uh, that it's completely pluggable. So you can go and write your rendering transformation. If it's not there, you just drop the jar containing it, and GeoServer will run it for you. So this is one example. I uh, have an excerpt uh, from an SLD file, and I'm calling the GS contour process, giving a, a list of uh, uh, elevations. This is kind of nice if you are trying to build a client in which uh, you allow the user to specify the levels be, uh, at which you wanted to perform the extraction, which is uh, kind of the norm when you are doing any kind of scientific application because the client, uh, sorry, the users tend to be very skilled and want very much control on, uh, on what uh, we are doing. So they want to choose the digital elevation model uh, extraction levels. They want to choose the colors and so on. The rendering transformations allow for all, uh, all this dynamic WMS uh, to happen. This is another example in which we took uh, the digital elevation model or whatever surface you have. And maybe you want to display point by point uh, the values. So we have all these little. Um, cells and showing the value inside the cell, which is also quite ki kind of nice for scientific applications. So OK, we know what the WP and WPS is. We know what makes a GeoServer different. Uh, how do I write processes for w this WPS? 
how am I going to leverage this machinery? Well, the first question that you have to make yourself is, do you really need to write processes? Geo server ships with uh, 80 plus built-in processes that are well suited for chaining. So it might happen that all you need to do is not to write a process, but just to run an execute, maybe with uh, some chaining in it to connect two or three simple processes and do the kind of uh, computation that you need. So this could be your starting point. So I invite you before you know, starting to fire up the IDE and start writing code to see if uh, GeoServer already provides what you need. But in case you need to write something new, there are options. You can write your processes in Java or in one of the scripting languages for the Java virtual machine, one of these four. And I'm going to show you a bit how. Java-wise, we have a, a low-level Java API, which everything else uses. Uh, as, as a low-level API, it's not exactly easy to use. But if you are taking a set of existing processes in some other language or uh, available on the command line, like you're trying to wrap the GDAL tools or uh, all the processes that uh, GRASS provides, it's kind of the natural entry point, because it, it's something that allows you to list all the processes, describe them, and so on. It's kind of heavy uh, in terms of programming if you are just trying to write one process. But if you are trying to wrap a an, uh, hundred existing processes, it's where you want to go. Uh, if you are instead trying to write a single process, we have a simplified way that under covers uses the, the factory. You just write a Java bean with an execute um, method. You, add a, uh, you sprinkle it with annotation describing the input and the outputs of the execute method, and voila, this gets turned into a WPS process. So you just have to drop the jar containing your uh, Java code uh, doing the processing, and uh, you have the WPS process running. If you, have no, if you are not much into Java uh, f to write processes, there are al alternatives. There are community modules that would help you write the same processes in a scripting language for the virtual machine. So you can use uh, Jiton, JavaScript, Groovy, and so on. You just drop a file in the right directory, and the process is ready to use. This is a simple example. Uh, this is a land use map, and the client will uh, let you uh, draw a polygon, and you want to know the distribution of each type of uh, land use within that polygon. So you would get something like this as the, as the result. The idea is that uh, you just have your source data. This is a shapefile in particular. You have one Python file, which is your process. And uh, in this case, uh, we also embedded the client, uh, that is the uh, HTML pl uh, page plus the JavaScript, inside your server, because there's this www directory inside your server, where you can put files that will be statically exposed to the web. Uh, this is all you have to do to uh, create uh, the, the result that we were looking at in terms of Python. As you can see, again, some annotations describing what the process does, and then some Python code that does the actual computation. Uh, this is using uh, GeoScript, and uh, I linked uh, the page where you can learn more about uh, GeoScript Python. And uh, um, if you are not into Python, uh, no problem. There is also support for uh, Groovy, JavaScript, and, uh, and Ruby. So you have options. The nice thing, as I said, about uh, the scripting languages is that you just drop a file in your server, and poof, you have uh, the WPS process showing up in the, uh, in the, in, in the WPS capabilities, and describe, and execution support. You remove the file, poof, the, the, the process is gone. You update the process, and the um, uh, the description of the process changes. So it's very dynamic. You don't have to restart the server, unlike with uh, Java-based processes. OK, so uh, what is new in GeoServer 2.7? GeoServer 2.7, as I said, is about to be released in less than two weeks. What do we have uh, new in terms of WPS? It turns out that thanks to NATO, we have a lot of, um, of new uh, functionality that, as I said, was sponsored by them. So um, as I said before, in uh, GeoServer and in WPS in general, you can do asynchronous requests. So you make the request, and then you ping back the server asking 
what's the status of my process? Is it finished? Is it uh, at 50%? What's going on? So, so far we had a problem. Uh, you basically could not uh, run a cluster of GeoServer installations uh, and do asynchronous at the same time because only the node that was running the process knew anything about it. And if you have a load balancer, there's a chance you are going, going to hit another node instead. You can use a stickiness, but it's kind of uh, uh, a nasty solution. Uh, in Just Server 2.7, we created a couple of interfaces with the, their uh, default implementations, process status store and proce process artifact store, that allow the, serv the various nodes of a cluster to have shared knowledge of what's going on in terms of asynchronous processes. So if the process is running on my WPS2 node and I ask WPS1 about it, it's going to know, oh, OK, it's still running and it's, uh, it's a 50% and it's going to respond me correctly. When the process is done and uh, the, re the results need to be dumped and make, made available to the client, we are going to go to the process artifact store and uh, again, every node in the cluster will be able to fetch them and return them to the client. So at this point, we have a uh, seamless uh, ability to cluster WPS even on, uh, on top of uh, asynchronous request. Uh, just to mention it, the default implementation of the shared status is based on Hazelcast. And uh, uh, for uh, the uh, sharing of the, of the artifacts, the outputs, we use a shared file system based approach. But these are interfaces. They are pluggable. Everything in GeoServer is pluggable, or <laughs> I dare say almost everything, which means that you can uh, use uh, your own implementation. You could uh, store everything in a database if you wanted to. You just implement those two interfaces and change the storage. Or you could store stuff in S3 on, on Amazon if you wanted to. It's just a matter of choice. And uh, this al will allow you to uh, adapt the WPS to different environments. Uh, on top of the uh, process state to store this idea that uh, we have this shared state about what's going on in terms of async request, we built a little GUI for the administrators so that uh, from the administration panel, you can see which processes are running, what's their name, when they are, uh, have been created, and so on. And as an addition that was not we, we, di we didn't have in the past, you can also select one process that's still running and cancel it, dismiss it. So if you, have a, if you see a process that has been running for hours and hours and uh, you think it's just chewing processing power for nothing, as an administrator, you can go and kill it. We gave this ability also to the client. It might happen that the client submits a request, an asynchronous one, and then decides that it's not interested anymore in the result because it's taking too long, because they figure out one of the inputs uh, was, was wrong, and so on. So we, um, this miss is an operation which we borrowed from the WPS 2.0 specification. GeoServer only implements the 1.0. So in our implementation, it's kind of a vendor extension. But basically, the client uh, gets back a, an ID when, uh, when you get the, 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 uh, the link status. And you can use it to run a dismiss and just cancel the execution. Now, canceling the execution is not exactly the easiest thing to do in Java. So we can cancel a process immediately if it's still queued. So it's not running. It's waiting for uh, the thread pool that runs the processes to uh, take it uh, into into execution, if it's, still reason, uh, uh, if it's still reading the inputs because we are adding a poison pill in, in the output to just kill the process, or if it's writing the output because we are poison pill, are going to poison pill also the outputs. If instead the process is just computing and running and spinning in memory without uh, doing any input and any output, well, we need its collaboration. We are going to tell it, tell it please die, and it has to collaborate. And die. Uh, not all processes are written that way. If I'm calling uh, a Java topology suite uh, a buffer, that thing is going gonna, is gonna to run forever, or I mean, it's going to run until it's done, because there's no way to block that uh, particular call. So 
uh, we, we added the machinery to make it possible to cancel, to dismiss the processes, but the, the processes have to collaborate. In GeoServer 2.7, we also added security for the processes. Up to 2.6, uh, you already were able to uh, cherry pick the processes you wanted to expose to the web. So we got 80 plus processes, maybe you don't want to expose them all. And you could cherry pick already which ones you wanted. In GeoServer 2.7, you will be able to selectively make the processes available to particular users instead. So certain users will see certain processes, other users will not. So role-based authentication, uh, role-based authorization at the WPS level. Finally, we added process um, um, limits, uh, execution limits. So um, if you know GeoServer, all the Mm, all the services have execution limits. In WMS, you can set a rendering time limit and a memory limit. In WFS, you can set a limit of the download or the feature that you are going to download. How many are you go, uh, going to allow? In WCS, how big the input and how big the output will be. In WPS, we add nothing. Up until now, in GeoServer 2.7, instead, we added a number of uh, safeguards around the WPS, which is something that we needed a lot because WPS, since it's processing, since it, it can deal with large amounts of data, could, could uh, uh, take a toll on your server. So we added the ability to specify how long a process can run, how long a synchronous process can run, and, and how long an asynchronous process can run. For synchronous process, you want to allow a small amount of time, since the HTTP connection will, will die on the client anyways. For asynchronous process, you might want to allow much la uh, much longer time. Uh, we are um, uh, uh, specifying how many uh, executions in parallel we are going to accept, and uh, for how much time we are going to keep the outputs uh, around for the client to fetch. But it doesn't stop here. It's also very important sometimes to put limits at the process level, and uh, so. Process by process, the administration, the administrator can now specify how big the inputs and, uh, will be, uh, tops, how um, the ranges of some certain values. Think about the buffer process. You don't want to allow huge distances. They don't make sense that they make the processing very slow. Uh, and for uh, repeatable inputs, how many of these repetitions you allow. Think of the contour process, like in this case, it may, takes a lot more time to extract 1,000 contours than 10. So uh, you wanted to limit how many of these uh, you allow. And uh, we added a pluggable framework to allow more type of validations to be added by the programmers if you want to have a better control on your processes. Just one thing, the limits that you can specify today in your server are advertised. We have the machinery in the WPS protocol to say, the maximum input size, the maximum repetitions, the uh, range of va acceptable values for the inputs. Whatever extra validation you add will not be published uh, uh, in any client visible way because the, uh, the WPS protocol does not have the ability to you know, uh, publish these extra validations. We have uh, a few new output formats such as GPX and KML, which is nice. It's always nice to have uh, more options for the, for the output. Uh, and we have a new download process, um, which is sort of an advanced clipping ship. I'm going to take just a one minute uh, to explain a bit about this. So in, uh, in OGC services, you already have WFS to download the vector data and WCS to download the raster data. So why do we need a, a download process? Are those two not the download services? Well, they are, but the problem is that they, they only support synchronous execution, so you cannot really uh, perform very large extractions using them. Uh, up until uh, a few tens of megabytes, they run just fine. But if you are trying to do an extraction of 20 gigabytes of data out of uh, 20 petabytes, uh, you cannot uh, just expect it to be able to, to wait on a single HTTP connection all the time. So 
WPS gives us asynchronous execution, we are going to leverage it. Plus, it's advanced clip and ship. So it's not just downloading data, it's about also clipping data. Um, so this new process that you can find in, in the community section allows for very large downloads and allows uh, you to build uh, uh, a front end like this one where I specified an area that I want to extract by point and click and then maybe buffer it a, a little and we use a, a JTS buffer process to do that and then filter the data according to certain criteria and then submit the, the extraction and wait for the result without uh, having any timeout problems. So this is what we have in 2.7. This is what we are going to uh, release in two weeks. What's cooking uh, for 2.8? We, uh, we just started to work on 2.8, but we already know a few things that uh, are going to show up. One is an OGR to OGR WPS output format support. So for all the uh, funky formats that we uh, don't support natively, we had the, uh, the ability to call out on to OGR to OGR and generate whatever output format OGR to OGR support, which means tens of new, of new output formats. Uh, this is one uh, uh, very nice thing that we are uh, working uh, with uh, some uh, scientific uh, institutes. They got this very large uh, weather model or fire uh, um, dispersion model or pollutant dispersion model or snow level forecast and so on. They are normally written in MATLAB, Python, uh, Fortran, uh, whatever. They take uh, their, their time to execute and uh, they have their own hardware dedicated to the execution. They wanted to expose them as WPS processes so that they, can, uh, they are visible onto the web. We are creating this WPS remote module which basically brings the two things together. And uh, basically you stand up a little wrapper around your MATLAB code, code that uh, advertises this new process to GeoServer, and GeoServer starts saying, oh, okay, I have a, a snow uh, level forecast model now. And uh, when the request comes in, it informs the processing node about it, fetches the, the result, and uh, in case you are interested, at the end of the execution, it also pushes the, uh, the result into GeoServer as a new layer. Uh, using the importer API, which is a, a, an extra model w which you can have in GeoServer. So this is a mm, very nice way to uh, expose your existing large uh, processing abilities uh, via WPS without hogging the, the WPS front end itself, but keeping everything uh, in its own dedicated machine. Uh, there will be more WPS integration. We are thinking about an automation module that uh, will uh, run WPS processes uh, uh, every now and then, so periodically, uh, which with focus with, uh, on uh, data ingestion, like you are getting a Landsat image every 15 minutes. We want this automated thing to take the Landsat image, process it, it, process it uh, a bit like uh, Maybe simple stuff like uh, add the overviews, reproject it, and so on, clean it up a bit, and then publish it as a, as a new layer or as a new entry in a, a time-based mosaic. Um, another thing is doing the opposite. We have this importer module that allows us to take some data that maybe GeoServer does not understand natively, like JSON, uh, not, as in, uh, not as a data store. And uh, you take the JSON and you import it and you turn it into a shapefile or import it in PostGIS. And sometimes you want to do some transformations in this uh, between uh, the input and the output. It would be nice to be able to call WPS uh, as part of these transformations. So I already have a process that does the transformation I want. I want to be able to chain it within the ingestion chain of the importer. WPS 2.0. WPS 2.0 is not supported by GeoServer. It's uh, already a, an official standard, though. So it would be nice if someone sponsored the, the development of uh, such capability. Maybe it could be someone in the audience today. And uh, with this, I'm done. Uh, before I take questions, the PDF of this presentation is already available on uh, the website, so you can uh, download it. And please remember to go and uh, evaluate the session. Questions? 
Um, yeah, I just, just have a quick question about um, the different formats for uh, WPS scripts in, in the Java. If, if you had like an identical workflow in um, you know Python and the low-level Java API, Ruby, are there any performance considerations like uh, things that languages that you recommend or that you shy away from for you know? raster processing or vector processing, are they all equal? No, they are not all equal. Uh, so in, in our company, we do uh, lots of uh, high performance uh, computation. And we tend to do all of it in Java using JAI or GeoTools as the API. I recommend using Python, Groovy, JavaScript, and Ruby for anything that is more like gluing together uh, capabilities that some Java code already provides to you instead. So, you know, it's like the relationship between Python and C. Uh, if you want uh, uh, things to perform, that you write them in C and then you wrap them somehow in, uh, in, uh, in Python, or you call to NumPy, which is, uh, again, uh, sometimes a wrapper around C code and so on. So keep the heavy part in Java and do all the gluing that you need in whatever scripting language you want. If it's not performance critical, do, please do everything in, uh, in Python if you like it. But if it's performance critical, it's not going to be as fast as if you had, had written it in Java. Okay. Nice. Anything else? Uh, what projects have implemented WPS? Good question. I have no idea. Um, I, honestly, I don't know. Uh, probably 52 North, because they are always involved with uh, the, the specification uh, development itself. Yes? That's all. Once you do the WPS, and then user create it, and then user can download it. Yes. Yes, this, uh, this process here. Uh, Yeah, so this is the user interface that we built for this clip and ship uh, um, process. And the process itself is just a WPS process uh, that you can call and you specify the layer name, the output format, and uh, the geometry clip in it, and uh, the what filtering you might want. Like maybe from a Rotten network, I just want to extract the highways or something like that. And uh, this process do does it all. and. Uh, Actually, it also packages the result in a zip file, and uh, there you go. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Uh, for this particular implementation, we also modified a little the, the GeoServer WPS so that even if the user uh, <coughs> closes the client and goes out for lunch, it's going to receive an email when the process is done. And this part has not been contributed to GeoServer yet because it has been made as a hack uh, in this particular Im implementation. And we are trying to, to, to build it as a, as a clean plugin instead. But uh, this is also something that uh, will be quite useful, in my opinion, because not, it's not always the case that you can just sit there on the client and wait for, for the process to end. And having a, an email notification, it's kind of handy. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah. OK. Anything else? Good. Then uh, we can go off to lunch.